sales. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been in sales all my life. And whether you realize it or not, you have as well. <laughs> and my guest today is Tom Reber. He is an entrepreneur, coach, HGTV host, and founder of The Contractor Fight. He coaches and advises business owners and CEOs on how to sell unafraid, build stronger teams, and scale their business profitably. We're going to have a great time here um, talking about sales. <laughs> I'm laughing because a lot of what Tom says, um, I tell my clients all the time. And um, whether you are selling highly complex, large construction projects or smaller deals, whatever the case is, the wisdom and the insight that Tom has will help you immediately to move the needle in terms of your sales efforts. And so you need to listen to this podcast. You need to pay attention to the simple but profound wisdom that is shared and if you do and get your people to listen to it as well, your selling will improve. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive into my discussion with Tom. This is Eric Anderton, and you're listening to Construction Genius, a leadership masterclass. Thomas Edison said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If you're a construction leader, you know all about the perspiration, and this show is all about the 1% inspiration that you can add to your hard work to help you to improve your leadership. Tom, welcome to Construction Genius. Eric, thanks for having me. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Um, <laughs> You're passionate about construction and you're passionate about helping people to overcome mediocrity. One area that you really focus on is sales. And I think it's something that mm -hmm. contractors often miss. They don't see themselves as salespeople. They don't see the value of it. They see themselves as builders and they're sort of yeah. waiting for something to happen. You have this phrase about the Google gods. Tell us about <laughs> the Google gods. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. I, I love this topic because I, I think there's so much low hanging fruit for the average contractor listening to this and their sales teams. Um, there's there's so much opportunity there. See, most most uh, most salespeople, most business owners, they they expect the Google gods to just drop worms into their little baby bird mouths in the nest. You know, feed me, feed me, feed me. You hire the marketing company and you. Um, you know, and you're, you're ticked off at them when the phone isn't ringing as much as you think it should. And so we can unpack all that, but you know, that's one of the things we talk about a lot in the fight and the workshops that I do and the keynotes I give is, you know, what is, what is the true cost of allowing mediocre sales days in your organization? And, um, I'm, I'm tired. I'm actually writing a book that's coming out in 2024 called sell unafraid. And it's about unleashing your sales success through personal discipline. And so, you know, if you want to go from mediocre and average to an elite salesperson, uh, it's going to come down to your daily disciplines and how you approach your time and uh, way above and beyond the scripts and the word tracks and the objection handling and things. I think there's a lot of opportunity to really be on the hunt instead of just being a waiter or a baby bird. Okay, let's talk about that then because you, you hit on yeah. some things that are near and dear to my heart, having been in sales for all of my life. Um, <laughs> what distinguishes a high performing salesperson from a mediocre salesperson? Yeah, I think it's how you choose to show up each day. Are you bringing your best with your controllable actions each and every day? You know, there's a lot of demands on a salesperson. Um, there's quotas to meet and all those things. And I think that's where I know I've made the mistake in years past uh, where I focus on the result instead of focusing on the steps each day that are going to get me closer to that result. So for instance, um, there's a, there's a thing we call a, a, um, a unexpected intentional touch. We call them UITs in our world. Uh -huh. And um, you know, if you, if you send a UIT is nothing more than taking your phone and sending a text or a quick little video to somebody. I, this is not a mass email thing. It, it could be a phone call. I don't care, but it is a personal touch. So Eric, if I, if I built something for you a year ago, right? And I'm going to intentionally text, call, video, quick, whatever, 30 seconds, and just go, Eric, it's Tom with ABC Construction. Man, I was just thinking about that project we did for you last year. How's it looking? Hit me back and let me know. 
It could be that simple. When I do this, I, every time I talk to a group of live of people, I have them take their phone out and I have them send one. I did a talk last go. week in Florida. Um, literally before I got off the stage, a guy raises his hand. He goes, I just sold 15 grand while we're sitting here. Right. Okay. Because as you know, we do so much as salespeople to court people into the relationship of doing businesses with us. And then we close the deal and then we look for the next one and we miss all the low hanging fruit that's in our database already. You know, all the stats about how much more likely somebody is to, um, to give you money if they've already done it before, because the trust is there and stuff. And so I, I found that there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in your database, in the people that already know you. Um, I have a GC that, that does this. Uh, he does three a day, every weekday of the year. He sends three of these messages out. It's, can, can you move so your mic? Can you move about. your mic a little closer to you? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just turn it up a little too. There you go. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. All right. So I, I have a GC who sends three of these a day, like clockwork, just as you know, he could be, um, you know, sitting in his doctor's appointment, waiting to go in and see the doctor. And he'll just send one and just go, Hey, Joe, you know, it, it's Bob just wanted to check in on the garage that we built for you last year or whatever, you know? It's just a conversation. The goal is not to sell something. The goal is to stay on their radar, right? To just let them know that you still care. Like salespeople in general are terrible at that because we're always on to the next kill. Right. <laughs> and so he uh, he sold over a million dollars in the last 12 months, simply sending three of these, three, three of these a day out yep. that generated conversations. I swear uh, on everything that is dear to me in my life. We just had our big event in Denver a month ago, three weeks ago. I'm giving the example of Bob selling a million dollars. I'm on the stage. He's off to my left. And I'm like, Bob, thanks for letting me share this. He's like, yeah, go for it. I got done with my opening talk. I walked off the stage and I give Bob a hug and I go, dude, thanks for letting me just share your story. He goes, you're not going to believe this. I go, what? He goes, we just sold another 130 grand from one of these literally while you were on the stage. Yeah. So that's one example of a daily discipline that is super simple to implement. Yep. Right. Um, that most salespeople won't do because we're always on to the next thing. And here's what I've found here. Can I just ask you a quick question, though, about that? Yeah. So, so I'm mm -hmm. the president of my company. Right. And let's say. I'm a builder, right? And and I feel a little cheesy about doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you help someone? Mm -hmm. Let's say they're not in sales directly, but really, if you're the president of the company, you're in sales every single day. 100%. How, how do you help yeah. someone who feels a little cheesy doing this? Well, I, I back it up and I, I, you know, do you care about your customers? Right? It, you know, to me, it's simply, do you... It, it, I, I don't mean to make this like a pitch fest or a book that's not even out yet, but like there's a chapter called, do you still care about me? Right. Right. And, and so, you know, it, it, like my wife, I courted her. I won her over, bought her flowers. We got married. It'd be ridiculous of me to stop doing those things. Sure. Right. And so same with our customers. And I just think this whole aspect of just, um, you know, picture everybody with a sign. I think it was in how to win, friends or influence people years ago was the first time I think I heard it. And then one of our coaches uses this all the time. Whenever he talks to a human being, he pictures a sign around their neck that says, make me feel important. Yep. Like if you just approached it like that. And so your salespeople should be doing this. Um, you as the, as the CEO should be doing it. Your office manager, when, she, when he or she has downtime can send some of these out. Right. So it's just, and collectively it, it, it adds up a lot. And here's why. Let's talk math, because I know your listeners care about the math yep. of the business. I have found, I've been doing uh, workshops and coaching on sales for years, worked with tons of companies, all right? I found that on average, the average salesperson has two, what I call mediocre sales days a week mm. on average, all right? Meaning they're not sending the UITs. Right. They're not you know, um, and I, I'm not even talking about inking a deal because I understand some projects are bigger, right? I'm talking building a new connection with an influencer, um, prospecting, all those different things, whatever, however you want to fill that in. What are those things that we have control over? Two average sales days a week. Well, if you just, I'm a calculator guy, man. <laughs> Me right? too. So, so if I go 50 weeks a year times two, that's a hundred <laughs> days 
Last I checked, <laughs> right? That's 100 days uh, that are mediocre. Well, it gets better, Eric. Check this out. There's about 264 sales days a year when you take out holidays and weekends and all that other stuff. Oh, yeah. So you divide 100 by 264. That's almost 38% of your available sales days. You're not showing up with discipline. Yep. Controlling what you control. Now, told you we're going to get crazy on this calculator stuff. If your sales rep has a goal of 2 million bucks, if I divide it by 264, that's 7575 a day. Yep. Times 100 days that he's mediocre, he's missing out at least 3 quarters of a million dollars. Yep. Okay. Now, again, I understand there's buying cycles and things like that, but that's just how I reframe this to go every day that I choose in that math example to not send the UITs, to not prospect, not do the things, not role play and train and those types of things as a day I've allowed myself to be among the average. And it's costing me at least seven, eight grand, 10 grand a day when I do that. Yep. And then you calculate your commissions and all that garbage from it. So then tell me then, um, what are some very simple ways for someone to, let's say, reduce two days of mediocrity to maybe half a day of mediocrity? How can you start mm -hmm. to make progress there? Yeah. So we have, a, um, we have a philosophy in the contractor fight that is success is an inside out game. Mm. Okay. I want you to picture dropping a rock into a, a pool of, uh, into a lake where that rock hits is the very center of the universe to us. Right. Sure. And that's what we call get oxygen as an individual. I take care of my body. I take care of my mind. I eat right. I don't, I sleep well. Like I take care of me. It's the old stupid airplane example, right? You got to have your oxygen first. Then the next ring out, we call your people meaning my immediate family. Cause another thing that goes along with this is success starts at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, every day of the week year round, my wife and I have a date is an example of that. Sure. It could be 15 minutes of a walk. It could be a glass of wine in the back where we're connecting. It could be a full on date. It could be bath time. It could be a number of things, but we get time every day. All right. Um, to do that. Then the next ring out is build your empire. And most business owners especially have that flipped, right? They make the business the center of the universe all in the name of taking care of the people they love and they neglect the people they love. They neglect, they put themselves last. And so the, the starting place to start eliminating mediocre days is set a standard for yourself or what I call a code of conduct of how I'm going to approach each day. I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of my people at home, right? And that's our people in our company too. Yes. And then, then we're going to work on on the business tasks. And, you know, there's the old saying, how you do one thing is how you do everything. If I'm showing up with consistency, taking care of myself, I'm not talking about going to be a bodybuilder yeah, right. or something like that and crossfitting, but like, are you doing the best you can do without excuse, regardless of how you feel, regardless of the field conditions to get oxygen, take care of your people, then build your empire. And I think people will be so surprised how quickly the sales results turn around when you work on you first. Yeah, it's interesting. There's there's three words that I, when it comes to this, because you're, you're right there, right? It's like we're talking about taking care of ourselves. And, and I think about nutrition, sleep, and exercise. With nutrition, moderation is the key. With, with sleep, sufficiency is the key. You know how much sleep you need. You got to get it. Mm -hmm. And then with exercise, <clears throat> it's consistency. You know, and again, no one's getting a six pack ab around here anymore, right? We, we, but, but we need to be focused on that consistent exercise so that we, we do have that inner circle taken care of. I think that's really excellent. Okay. So if yeah, I've how got much sleep, how much, how much sleep do you get? Just out of curiosity. Me, I'm a, I'm a seven hours a night guy. So if I get yeah, seven, I'm, I'm good. If I'm less than seven, then I'm, I'm not good. Yeah. I'm, I'm eight to nine. Yeah. You know, and there, there used to be a time when I was four, Yeah, yeah <laughs> you yep. know, four or five and I'm 54 years old yep. and I'm just seeing, I was just curious how much you slept because I'm seeing the value in it. And, you know, we just ordered these things called the Uller to cool off your bed. Yeah. You have a sleep number bed and you put this Uller and it cools it off. So you sleep better, whatever. Anyway. No, that's cool. Um, yeah. I think I just, I, I do want to make a, I, I want to make a point here that Tom's making. That's really important for people listening. I, I know a lot of guys in, in construction Dude, you all are out of shape. 
You don't take care mm -hmm. of yourselves. And you think, dude, I don't have time, man. I'm running a 50, 60, 70 million dollar company. I don't have time. And, and I think Tom really nails it. If you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of your people and your empire is going to suffer. So you really need to pay attention to that. So, Eric, it's funny. I one of the the very first conversation I have when I work solely with a CEO at that level. Yep. Our very first conversation, I, I asked two questions. I said, tell me about how you're taking care of your, your body and your health. And when's the last time you took your wife on a date? Sure. Right? Because success is an inside out game and it starts at home. Yep. And you, I, I personally believe, because I've seen it. My, I, listen, I've made millions and I've been bankrupt and I've made millions. Yeah, right. right. So I've, I've been on every end of this thing. Yep. I can tell you from personal experience that for me, my business will only be as strong as I am yep. and my relationships at home are. And because who I am at home and my health and stuff, I take with me everywhere. That's right. And that impacts every area of your life. And, you know, as you know, success is inconvenient. Success doesn't care how you feel today. You know, sales, running a business, this is a high stamina game. I heard a stat. I wish I would have, I, I would have wrote down where I heard this. Maybe you know that running a multi-million dollar business as a CEO is the equivalent of the exertion, mental and physical exertion of being a professional athlete. Wow. Yeah. So yep. there's something out there in the world that I wish I could cite, but, and that I, that's why I just believe it's so important that, that you take care of yourself. That's tremendous. Um, let's, let's go back to specifically the idea of, of selling. Um, I have this phrase that's mm -hmm. always stuck in my head that I cannot control productivity, but I can control activity. If I focus on mm -hmm. quality activity, then the productivity will come. Um, if you buy into that, what do you think the difference is between quality activity and then mediocre activity? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it's really being a, um, what's the word, a, a student of, of your time and its, efficient, its effectiveness, mm -hmm. right? So we have this crazy metric that we track um, called... Uh, ESR, effective sales rate. Okay. Okay. So if it's dollars sold in a time period divided by hours spent in the sales process, yep. could be prospecting, following up, standing in front of somebody on the site and having a cup, whatever it is, right? Uh, putting a proposal and you divide that and it gives you a number, three grand, 40 grand, whatever it is. We found that the higher the number, the more efficient you are and the better you're using your time. OK, yep. so I think it's just really, you know, I and to, and to really dumb it down. It's is the juice worth the squeeze? Yes. You know, if I'm if I'm part of some networking group or whatever you want to call yep. it, and it's X amount of hours a week or a month, you know, and I've been tracking the stuff, you know, we have a problem versus I know, like the example of Bob and so many others, when they take literally five to 10 minutes a day to send UITs out. Yep. Right. And it brings back a million bucks or more a year. That's a pretty good use of time. And so we want to make sure, you know, we're spending, you know, the bulk of our time on that 20% of stuff that drives the biggest results. And I think that's where most people don't track, you know, they're busy, right? I got to do this. I got to do that. They're, they're busy running around because they feel like if I'm busy, I must be working. Yes. And, um, and, and this has been a big shift for me in the last several years, decade, probably I used to be the more activity I could throw against the wall, the better. Right. And, and I've really shifted that with just understanding that not all activities that I have control over are equal. Yes. So let me ask you, you mentioned something there that I think is really important to go after and that's networking events. Mm -hmm. Um, what advice do you have for construction company salespeople in terms of picking the networking events they go to? Um, or do you think that well, networking I, events are a total waste of time? I think you could, you could answer that with it depends, right? Okay. Like it depends what's the group and um, is your ideal client more likely to be there or what we call influencers, right? Yep. So if I'm a painting contractor... Um, my influencers are going to be like developers or building inspectors or whatever, people that know my ideal client who might be a facility manager. Right. Right. So if I think, is that association or group um, 
connected to the influencers of my ideal client or my ideal clients there. Yep. And then part two of that is I think most salespeople, they jump into a networking group and then they take on what we joked about earlier, the baby bird thing. Mm. Like I'm in this group, give me a lead, That's right. give me a connection where if you go in going, I'm going to play the long game here yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to, give this thing two years yeah. where I'm just going to give, yep. right? I'm going to get on a committee. So, I mean, I, I had a buddy who was a, uh, we had this thing back in Naperville, Illinois, when I lived in Illinois called Rib Fest, this big, huge thing they have. Yep. And the Rotary Club at the time was all the business owners yeah. and the blah, 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 right? And he joined the Rotary Club and he joined this committee where they poured beer at the beer garden every year at Rib Fest. And he got to know the other business and he was closing deals left and right yeah, yeah. because he was giving and he was serving in the thing and he never had to ask for it to be the annoying salesperson. Yep. So um, I had another friend, he was one of my competitors who was getting the inside scoop on all these big commercial painting projects that I didn't even know were out for bid because he was on a committee. Yep. You know, so I think it's having that that play the long game mentality, you know, and that, and that's, you know, as human beings, we want the quick win, right. you know, we want to join the thing and get the check, you know, but that's sadly not how it works all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm having a great time listening. Um, actually, I'm not listening. Am I, I'm actually doing the interviewing, but I'm listening to Tom and I'm having a killer time. Uh, this is Eric. And I just want to give you a quick shout out here for my book, construction genius, effective hands-on practical, simple, no BS, a leadership strategy, sales, and marketing advice for construction companies. You're getting some killer sales advice here from Tom. I've got some of that in my book as well, in addition to the leadership and the strategy and the marketing. And so go out to Amazon, purchase yourself 10 or more copies of Construction Genius. Send me an email, eric at constructiongenius.com and say, Eric, I purchased 10 copies. I will come in via Zoom for one hour. And with your leadership team, we can do a Q&A on the book. And also, I'll do some bonus training for you that you are really going to enjoy. It's going to actually help you to implement what I teach you in one of the chapters in the book. It'll get super practical. So again, go out to Amazon, get yourself 10 copies. If you get 10 copies, that'll be about 200 bucks. I normally charge $2,500 for an hour of my time, and you can get it for just 200 bucks by purchasing the book. That is a killer deal, by the way, and uh, you should take advantage of it. All right, let's go back to the conversation with Tom. So the idea of, of su successful networking is, number one, you've, you've got to make sure that your target market is involved in some way in that networking group or at least influencers of that target market. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you've got to commit to the long game. And then the third thing is you've got to commit to giving without expectation of immediately receiving back. Is that, did I hear that right? Yeah, you, you did. And I, you know, it's about earning confidence, right? I mean, when you're going to do business with somebody or refer somebody, um, there's, you know, you're putting your neck on the line, right? Yep. If you, if you're going to refer another company like you and I have through the years, right? You want to make sure that you more than getting a finder's fee or any of that garbage, you want to make sure they don't damage your brand and your name. That's right. right. And so you got to earn confidence over time. And, and I think, you know, just showing up to some monthly meeting and shaking hands and handing out cards doesn't earn confidence. I think it's being together with people yep. and, you know, whether it's charitable causes or, you know, whatever it might be. Let me ask you this. Tell us a, a story of someone that you've worked with who was really struggling. They, they were frankly a mediocre salesperson and they made a couple of key changes that helped them to go from mediocre to high performing. Can you describe that a little bit? Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we I, I got hundreds I could think of here. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, I've already talked about Bob. I think somebody else I'm talking about is um, another general contractor who really changed the game, like five, seven X his business in like a three, three year period of time. And it, it came down to three core pillars. Number one, he, we, we dug back into making sure he was confident in his numbers, mm. you know, um, you mean the numbers he was bidding. Yeah. The numbers he's bidding. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, I, I believe that the higher your gross profit, the easier it is to have a high net profit. <laughs> right. What a concept. So, yeah. And, and I think it was when you really understand what it costs to produce the thing you cost or do, and then you tie all the risk to it. Mm. 
the risk to property, to people, to reputate, all these different things. It's, re- it's really kind of ridiculous how cheap contractors work for when you figure all that mm-hmm. in. And so he set some standards that he wasn't going to go below a certain margin on his gross profit. Mm-hmm. And if he did, he wasn't doing the job. And I think what that does, when you have confidence in your numbers, you're not the groveling salesperson that needs the job, right? Number one. Number two, um, he really dug in to, again, what we call selling unafraid. And, and that's a strong pre-qualification process Mm. before you're running out there. And I understand commercials a lot different than, than the, um, than the residential world. I totally get that. Right. But you can still have a pre-qualifying conversation. If Eric, Eric, you call me up to build an airplane hangar and I'm going to dig into your motive of what's important to you. And it's usually an emotional thing. The motive it's step one of our process. Motive is a, is emotion. You don't want the airplane hanger. There's a reason you want the airplane. Like, you know, why, why do you want a drill bit? Right. You know, you want a hole, but why do you want a hole? You want to hang your kid's picture on it. Right. So there's a deeper emotional connection that I think most salespeople don't get to. Um, And then the third part is really focusing on getting the right eyeballs on your business. Mm. And I think that's a, that's a huge area that um, Kevin, the guy I'm thinking of really focused on was um, what story are we telling the world about our brand? Mm. And I think salespeople in general are not using these little supercomputer movie studios that we have here to their full capacity of, showing us who you are. And I'm not talking just before and after pictures yeah. and that stuff. I'm talking like, um, you know, there's a, there's a painting contractor, commercial painting contractor out of Ohio. He's on LinkedIn. His name's Steve Spinelli. He's a good buddy. He's been part of our stuff. Right. And Steve did a video on LinkedIn where it was a Saturday and he's like, Hey, we got to keep this project moving. I I've been out of the field for years, but I came in today. I volunteered to come spray all these door frames on this space. Yep. Right. And um, he's like, cause we don't want to hold things up yep. Sunday. He, he goes live on the, on, on the video. And he's like, well, I'm back. I came to check on my work. It ain't very good. <laughs> like he'd lost his skills a little, right. You know, you're the owner, you're out of the field. And he's like, I came in to check my work, and what I've realized is I wouldn't stand for this if one of my guys did it, and I need to fix this today, so I'm going to sand down all these frames and reshoot them so I don't hold up the GC on Monday morning. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? And it's things like that where you're showing us, you could tell us you have integrity all day, but that's how I think a lot of salespeople and companies can do a better job on social of just really showing us who you are. He had another another video he did where um, he got out and he said, um, I had an opportunity to do this massive paint project for a new customer. And I had to say no to it Mm. because if I would have accepted it, it would have been an issue, a domino effect down the line with some of our already amazing clients that we have and commitments that we've made. And you know what it's like turning things down like that. Like there's a part. But and, and again, and it's funny, I. I texted him about this. He's like, dude, you're not going to believe this. After I posted that, my main company that I kept my commitments to and didn't screw up their schedules because I said no to something, they called me. They said, we saw your video. We have another $350,000 project for yeah. you. You know, so yep. so I think it's it's confidence in numbers, selling unafraid and working. This is what I mean when I kid around about the baby birds thing. If salespeople would show us who they are situations you're running into on a job show us who you are in the community that you're a father you coach a little league team whatever all these things to help get the right eyeballs those three things combined together will really move the needle quickly because it 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 makes you stand out you're uncommon yeah that's great that's great i think one of the phrases that i like to think a lot about in terms of selling that i think everyone needs to adopt is the idea of kings talking to kings and i think that goes back to your confidence piece is is that if, if I'm doing the work necessary from a sales perspective, I am never desperate. I never have yeah. to go in there on my hands and knees saying, please give me this job. I can go in there with a sense of mm-hmm. confidence and a, and a sense of um, real clarity about what I need to do for my business and the right type of client I need to be working with and make my, sa- my selling decisions based on that. Well, yeah, get, you know, I... I said for years that I think the two most important words in, in business are clarity and consistency. Yeah. 
get be clear on what you want and consistent on the stuff that it takes to get you there every day and chip away, right? Because we're compounding towards something every day. You just got to make sure it's the intentional thing you want to be compounding for it. And like you said, when you're clear on your numbers, you're clear on what your ideal client, your perfect project, what your not ideal project looks like, it, and you can say no with confidence, it opens up space for so many other things to come your way. Let me ask you a question here going to just pivoting a little bit. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been working with one of your clients and they've been bidding on a, a let's say a, a large project, whatever size it is for them, but for them, let's say it's a large project, maybe a complex um, process and it comes to awarding the project and it gets awarded to the competition and they, they come in and they say, Tom, you know, man, I put blood, sweat and tears into this, but it got awarded to someone. And mm -hmm. the guy who made the decision, I didn't even know the dude who made the decision. I didn't know who the final decision maker was. Does that ever happen? Yeah, it's happened. It's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's again, that's where I think it's so important to have a, a strong pre-qualification conversation. Okay. So, and so, yeah, so for, for instance, that. if we're having that conversation and, you know, and, and I, I only know our process, no, that's fine. right? No, go so, for it. so step one is motive. Like, you know, why do you want to build the thing? Right. Yep. You know, and you kind of create that emotional connection. Most salespeople won't do that. They won't lead with empathy and enthusiasm and the right questions. They won't shut their mouths long enough to hear what's really important to people. All right. And usually those emotional motives are rooted in embarrassment and fear and those other yes. things, right? So once I got motive, I'm now going to say, Eric, based on what you're telling me about this project, um, I got one of two ways that we can approach it. Right. All right. We could go blow the roof off this thing in every way and go big and crazy. You know, I don't, doesn't matter what the project sure, no, is, it's right? Good. You get it's the good. point, right? And, you know, we could we could build this thing for you that'll be the talk of the town. It'll be in every trade magazine about, say, you're building an auto dealership or something, right? And it'd be the talk of the town, and every everyone's going to model it after you. And it's I don't know. We're looking at you know thirty to forty million bucks. Or we could come in, not go all crazy bells and whistles, and build you everything that you want based on what we talked about for say, you know, twenty twenty five million. Sure. Which of those conversations does it make sense for us to have? Yep. They're going to tell you their budget right there. Yep. Because you're not, if you go, what's your budget? Most people lie. Right. Or they play the game. Well, I don't know. We've never built a thing like this before or whatever. Now you're going to move to what, you know, step three. Uh, I can, I can skip for right now. But then step four, we call influencers. Yep. Who are the influencers in the deal? So you go, yeah, you know, Tom, we're not going to do the, the 40 million project, but we were thinking it was going to be 20, 25, 30 million, something like that. All right. So if we came back with the design that you wanted, right, um, and we were in that range, what would happen next? Yes. All right. Well, we'd have to run it through so-and-so and this and that. Okay. Would it make sense to have a conversation with them? Or another question might be, who else is excited to do this project that we need to get on board and just make sure that we're, we're talking the right numbers? So just these little steps that most people don't do in pre-qualification can save. I mean, you know, long, how, how much time salespeople and estimators put projects together and the time that's eaten away when it could be solved by having a conversation up front where, man, that's never going to fly in our world. So don't even bother. Right. I'd, rather, I'd rather not even bid the thing you know, then spend God knows how much time on that. Yeah, it's interesting. I really like your framing there of the budget, um, the budget question there. I think that's excellent because instead of just asking, hey, what's your budget? You're asking, you're framing it for them and letting them tell you in a more natural way. I think the other one that's so important, and I think a lot of salespeople, they feel a resistance to asking the question. And it's around that idea of who mm -hmm. besides yourself is involved in the final decision. Yeah. And yeah. What what can a salesperson do to overcome that internal resistance they feel to um, asking the tough questions or maybe the uncomfortable questions? Yeah, well, I think get in the habit of doing uncomfortable things <laughs> back to what I said earlier about how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if I'm as ridiculous as this sounds and I have more after this, but the pl first place is like, am I putting myself Am I holding myself to that personal code of conduct? I don't miss a workout. I'm home for five for dinner when I said I was going to be home. I honor the commit. Like when you truly commit to being that type of person who does the inconvenient things, that's step one. Step two, I think it's practice. 
right? You know, I'm, I'm, I was in the Marine Corps. We went to the rifle range. A pro golfer, what do they do? They go to the driving range. A baseball player gets in the batter's box. And most salespeople don't role play. They don't put mm-hmm. themselves in uncomfortable situations. We have a, we have a, um, a, a group uh, coaching program where every weekday of the year, unless it's a holiday, we have a live sales training role play call Interesting. with our coaches. We'll have 50, 60, 100, 100 members on the thing, all role playing and learning. And within the community outside of that call, they role play with each other all the time. And they and the whole goal is going, Eric, I really struggle at this part of the, with this objection or I really struggle with this part of the sales process or asking this or like you just said, the tough questions. Yeah. So I want you to just turn the screws on me on this and push me push me to be really uncomfortable so that when it comes game time, you've been there before. Yep. Right. And now you're not all panicked and puckered up and in the corner yep. freaking out. You yeah. Know? I so. think that's really great. What is your opinion on scripting sales presentations and, and how effective is that? And should I do it and all that kind of stuff? Well, if you have scripted sales presentations and it's working for you and you're hitting your targets and your goals and I go, good, good. Right. Like that's, um, you know, let's not break something that's not, or fix something that's not broken. Yep. <laughs> um, however, I'm more of a fan of frameworks, mm. um, than I am scripts. Okay. You know, I have my go-to word tracks sure. and things like that. You, you know, somebody says, Oh, that's too much money. Oh, that's interesting. Eric, what makes you say that? Yeah. Instead of me being on the defensive, make them justify why they think it's so much yeah, money, yeah, yeah. right? That's one of my go-tos done with the correct tonality, not what I just did. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think you have to have some frameworks around information that you need. And I think it comes with practice and training and, you know, that, and, and you can build those. But I, I, you can tell when somebody's totally scripted. Yep. You can tell when somebody doesn't really care. Um, you know, so... Yes, I think you need a you need some scripts and word tracks as a starting point, but that's where role playing comes in, where you kind of make them your own over time, and you add your own style. Like humor is one of my things when I used to sell. Um, I had this this builder I was going after, you know, for fourteen months. It took me to land the builder, and um, you know, back back in in the day in the early two thousands, and the first time I I cold called the office, and um, the lady at the desk is like, the only way any other painting contractor is getting in here is if Albert dies. <laughs> okay, he's been with us for 20 years or whatever it's been, right? I'm like, all right, I left my stuff and I'm gone. So my framework is I'm just going to keep showing up. That's one of my frameworks. Just be consistent. Keep showing up. Be like a bad rash, right, until they deal with me. And so... I'd see one of their trucks. I'd leave a folder or a card on it. I'd drive by their office. I'd stop in and talk to the old lady at the desk again, whatever. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I'd stop in on their job sites. I'd stop into the office. I'd, you know, whatever, what I, for 14 months. And so what had happened is every time I'd stop into the office, the elevator would open, it would ding. And out of the elevator, you turn right, and that was her desk. So every time she heard the ding, she'd look up. So we did this cat and mouse game where every time I, I came out of the elevator, I would peek around the corner because, and she'd just see my head peek around and I go, I'd smile and I go, did Albert die yet? <laughs> and that became like our thing. And so that's where you just got to be you, yeah. right? You, you take these frameworks and word tracks and stuff, but you can only get to that level of mastery by repetition and practice. Yep. Like there's four levels to learn in a new skill. You know, there's unconscious incompetence. You stink at it and you don't know it. And then you have some awareness. So now you have conscious incompetence. Like, I know I'm not good at this thing. Now I'm working on it. Now I have conscious competence where I'm good at this, but I have to try. And then I reach unconscious in, uh, competence, which is mastery. It's second nature. It's the guitarist on stage shredding a guitar solo, having a conversation with the sound yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's And that, that's where you get. So most salespeople... They just don't practice. They don't put themselves under the under the fire. Do you ever talk you know? to your to, to your uh, the students? Do you ever talk to them about cold calling in terms of, dude, you're driving around town? Well, let's call it warm calling. You're driving around mm-hmm. town. Get out of your car or your truck and stick your head in the in the uh, client's office or the potential client's office and and mm-hmm. say hi. You ever talk about that? Every day. Yeah. 
every day. And and so here here's and and people are like, well, what do I say? <laughs> You know, what's a script for prospecting? I'll give you mine and it's universe. If I don't care what I was, if I was selling hot dogs, I would use this somehow, right? I'm a fan of when I see a truck of somebody that, you know, say I'm a commercial painting contractor and ABC commercial builders drives by. I literally take a picture of the truck. I call the number. I go, hey, this is Tom with commercial painting. I just saw one of your trucks go by. Um, I'm a commercial painter. You're a commercial builder. I just thought it might make sense for us to know each there other. You go. That, that, that has been my script for over 20 years. It's beautiful. Okay. And it's just, and you know what? You're going to hear a lot of no's. That's okay. All right. But if you did one of those a day, think about that. If you did one of those a day, you hop online for 10 minutes instead of surfing Facebook, get online and search whoever your ideal client is and stop by and say the same thing, you know, DM them on social, say that I don't care what it is. Find, just winner. See the elite, they find a way to win. They don't care what the field conditions sure, are, right? Sure. Like if it rains and we're going to play a football game and there's a foot of mud, we both got to play on the same field, yep. find a way to win. That's right. You know, and be consistent. God, you know, I've tried prospecting. That didn't work. You know, you could prospect with social media. You could prospect with email, the UITs, the influencer calls. That Those are the daily disciplines that I'm talking about that people are missing out on. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, so as we're wrapping up here, Tom, and I, I appreciate your time, give us mm -hmm. the, the top three pieces of advice, and you can feel free to summarize anything you've already said that you would give to a salesperson to, to make traction and to immediately start moving the needle in the next 30 days? Um, I was writing them down as, as they came yep. to me. So first, um, work on you. Mm -hmm. It's an inside out game. Yep. All right. That never changes. Second, it's what I call win the moments. You can't win the day if you don't win the moments throughout mm -hmm. the day. So when you think, Oh, I should call that guy who's ticked off at me. Yep. And you talk yourself out of it. That was a moment you lost. That's right. Okay. Um, I drove by a commercial facility for like six months. I swear to God, I drove by for six months. and I'm like, I got to stop in there and because it needs a paint job. It needs a paint job. It needs a paint job. One day I drove by, it was painted. Ah, I hate that. Okay. All right. <laughs> because I didn't win. I didn't. How many moments did I not win? Yep. So, so inside out game, win the moments. And, um, and practice, put yourself in the ring, yeah. role play this stuff, get uncomfortable because the elite in anything are always practicing, you know, the Brady's of the world, the Michael Jordan's of the world. I mean, I, I was just, I just spent time with Tim Grover, who was Kobe's and Michael Jordan's trainers for years last week in Vegas at an event, you know, and he put them under the fire and these guys were the elite of their game. Yep. And they were, they built the habit of being uncomfortable and, and, you know, guys, once you start getting uncomfortable and make it a habit, it's not that big of a deal. That's great. You know, that's great. Well, Tom, I there really appreciate your time. Tell us more about you and, and your business and how people can get in touch with you, please. Yeah. So I run the contractor fight, the fights between your ears. It's how you show up. It's what you think about yourself and success. You know, we work with thousands of contractors all over the world in several different industries. Um, you can go to the contractor fight.com. You know, I, I do a lot of workshops, a lot of, um, you know, keynotes and things like that, as well as, you know, we have other coaching programs and stuff. So I, I super appreciate you having me here. And anyone that wants to check things out, head to the contractor Excellent. We'll have links in the show notes. Tom, you've been really generous with your time. Appreciate it. And I do wish you the best. Likewise, Eric. Thank right you. On. Hey, this is Eric. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Tom Reber. Make sure you go out to the contractor fight.com and learn more about the work that he does. And thank you for listening to Construction Genius. I have a request. My YouTube game needs to be upgraded and you're here to help. The way that you can help is going out to my YouTube channel. Just search for Construction Genius. You'll find it. And subscribe. Subscribing helps because the more people that subscribe, the algorithm sees that and they're thinking, man, well, the the algorithm is not a person, but the algorithm then responds to the number of people subscribing and begins to show the videos to more people. So my goal is to really upgrade my YouTube game in the next year or so. And so if you can help me with that, I would deeply appreciate it. 
Thank you for listening to Construction Genius today. Share this podcast with all of your people in your business who are in sales. And that means everyone in your company because everyone's in sales. Thanks again for listening. I'll catch you on the next episode.